Welcome, foolish mortals, to Halloween treats presented by the Look Back Machine. For the entire month of October, we bring you 31 episodes on 31 flicks. So sit back and relax on your broomstick. We have blood-curdling boogeyman and sadistic serial killers. From castles to were-rabbits to spine-chilling spine-tinglers. Oh, but that's not all. It's only a bit. There's also Dharma, Dracula, and Wallace and Gromit. So turn down the lights and turn up the sound. And ready your heart for it's about to pound. Because there's Halloween film history abound. Happy Halloween from the Look Back Machine. Director Stuart Gillard had worked for Disney before. He had directed Rocket Man back in the 90s. In the 2000s, however, Disney Channel original movies were on the rise, and Gillard went on to direct seven DCOMs, three of which are part of Disney's effort to have a Halloween movie every October. We begin with Gillard's first DCOM, Scream Team, which is marked by an all-star cast. Kim Coates, Eric Idle, Tommy Davidson, Kathy Kajimi, and not to mention a young Kat Dennings. The story follows two kids whose grandfather has died, but is not yet crossed over into the afterlife. And on the kids' journey to save their grandfather, they discover a portal into the afterlife run by the Soul Patrol, who they befriend and uncover the mystery of their haunted town. This is the story of Scream Team. Director Stuart Gillard. I looked it up before you and I talked. I've done 12 movies for Disney. Isn't that extraordinary? I did a feature. And I'd done a couple of movies. I'd done the Rocket Man for them. And then I'd done a, before that a Sunny, Disney Sunday night movie, The Shaggy Dog. And then I, they were, they'd call me off and on over the years to come direct something for them. I would get a script from them. Um, and uh, I, was, I was never available or the script was that good. And then I got, they sent me um, Soul Patrol. By the way, Soul Patrol was the original title, but it turned out there's, a, there's an obscure radio show called Soul Patrol, and they were scared of a lawsuit, which I thought was nuts. And that's why they changed the title to Scream Team, which, which is why you hear all the references to Soul Patrol in the movie. That was done way afterwards. They'd already had approval. No, they just let it go, I think, at that point. Yeah, I know. But that, that was really too bad. That was done at the 11th hour. I mean, I think the artwork and everything had been done, and I, and I think at the last minute, somebody in Disney legal prevailed, I think, against everybody's better judgment. They, because I, I mean, there's no way it was any simpler. They would never would have had an issue, but somebody got, got scared. It was, I think it was some obscure, small religious radio show or something. It was called Soul Patrol. I mean, it was hardly what we were doing. Because what turned out that Michael Healy, who ran the movie division over there, was a big fan of the Turtles. So when I met Michael in his office, he, had, he said, look at this. He had turtle memor memorabilia all over his office. And it's because his kids were the age they are. He took all his son in, to see the movie. So he, I, I had a kind of, I had a built, it was great because Michael and I hit it off right away. He was a brilliant, is a brilliant executive. And he and Gary Marsh were really making a lot of movies. They just invented that whole Disney Channel uh, movies. They did, I don't know how many they made, but they made a lot of them. But they really developed some great scripts. And so I read Soul Patrol and it was just one of the funniest scripts I've ever read. It was written, written by a guy called Dan Berenson, who's just a brilliant writer, who actually wrote a lot of the Disney movies, some of which I subsequently directed. But really, it was sort of in a vein of kind of a Beetlejuice feel a little bit. And I instantly knew I could do, I wanted to do it. And what's great about Disney Channel, why I loved working there and ended up doing, I think I did eight or nine, ten movies for them in a row, was because they really believed in giving the director free reign. And they had, you know, very good budgets, had big budgets. At the time, they had to show, shoot it all on uh, film, 35 millimeter. They wanted it to look like movies. If they liked to, you could re you could work for them a lot. And they, were, they gave me complete freedom. I mean, Michael and I would do a little bit of work in the script. The thing they were involved in was in prep. They really were very involved in casting because they're just brilliant at casting. I have to admit, they just cast. There's such an eye for talent. It's amazing. And I would be in the casting sessions, but they really had a sense of what they wanted. But they inevitably got really good casts, like really good actors. These kid actors were fantastic. And then they got bit by Kat Denning was in that, so who's from 
but two broke girls, right? And what's great about Cassie and Kat Denning, you know, she wasn't a typical Disney cute, thin girl. This was a girl that looked like a regular girl. And it was kind of anti-Disney casting, but they still cast her. And she was just really good at it. I, Mark Rydell was a kid, I think. I can't remember. It was Mark Rydell, I think. But, um, you know, then then we got um, Eric Idle on board because the material was so funny. We caught Eric at a perfect time in his career, but he was looking to do something. And we got Kathy and the Jimmy to come in because the part was good. Kim Coates, you know, from uh, Sons of Anarchy. So we had a we had a great cast. And um, it was just a really fun movie to shoot. I mean, it really was. I mean, with that kind of cast, you know, you know that the stuff's going to be even better than it's on the page. The Scream Team. What is it? It's a ghost, and I'm keeping it. Starring Tommy Davidson, Eric Idle, and Kathy Najimy. Don't mess with me. I am in no mood today. The Scream Team, a Disney Channel original movie. They're having the time of their afterlife. Friday at 8, 7 central on Disney Channel. I just, the crew just, you know, to watch Eric Idle was just huge for them to come in and be able to watch this guy. I was working with Eric and at the same, you know, he, he told me how we used to go, what made him crazy was he said that, uh, that people keep coming up to him and doing Monty Python and <laughs> drove him nuts because he would, they come up and they'd do the Monty Python sketch to Eric Idle. He'd just be staring at them <laughs> as they were going to, you know, the dead parrot or whatever. So he just drove him crazy. And I said, you know, I said, Eric, I said, Eric, so what, you know, he said, I just got a little hole in my schedule. I said, you know, we're great time. And I said, what? What's next? He said, I'm doing this little project. He said, you know, come see it. I'm going to try it out in Chicago. It's this little thing. I said, oh, that's I said, who's directing? He said, it's a stage thing. He said, who's directing? He said, Mike Nichols. I'm going, like, Mike Nichols. I said, what is it? He said, you spam a lot. <laughs> so I don't think he was writing at that time. So I think we just caught him at a perfect time uh, in his career to come do that. And he was just such a pro, like all the British actors, you know, always on set, always on time, always there for the you know, off camera, I never had a call from him, no star attitude whatsoever. And just a pleasure. And Kathy and Jimmy, the same thing. She was coming off those Disney movies, you know, the, the Nun series with Whoopi Goldberg. But the thing is, you know, the Disney Channel, they give directors a lot of leeway. They really do. They, they, don't, they don't hover over you on set. They expect you to direct the movie. And if you direct it well and with some style and turn it in like a little feature film, I was... Uh, pitching how I wanted to shoot the movie because, um, you know, a lot of it takes place at night and, and a lot of it's in the woods, but the two leads of course were at the time, I think I'm going to say 12 and 14 or 12 and 16, something like that, because anyway, which means automatically you can't work them very long hours because they're under eight. You're only allowed so many hours a day. They have to have, uh, you know, schooling and everything. But more importantly, that you can't work them late. I think the curfew was, I don't know, 10 o'clock or something. You couldn't work past 10 o'clock. Well, in the north, it doesn't even get dark until about 8. So I knew I, I, I knew I had a real challenge to try and shoot all these scenes at night running around and in the woods especially. So I said, uh, I think I said, you know, I love Beetlejuice. So I said, you know, I think what would be great is if I shot all the uh, night scenes in the woods, why don't I shoot it like they, I'm talking to younger, a younger executive, uh, Michael Healy, and I said, so what I like to do is I said, uh, I like to shoot it day for night. And the guy's staring at me. I said, you know, day for night, like they did in Shane. I like to be like Shane. There's those great day for night scenes when the bad guy's right in the corral and, it's, and, the, and the guy's nodding saying, that's a great idea. So I, I shoot day for night and I get this phone call after the first day's daily is going, what are you doing? Because nobody turned out knew what day for night was until they saw it. And there was a huge panic that when I thought about yeah, I realized later that the guy that I'm talking to was nodding had never probably even heard of Shane, let alone watched it when I was pitching the uh, idea. So that was a little rough moment. And then they embraced it and we went on, but I'll never forget that. Because it was my first movie for them in a few years. And so I thought it was going to be fired after day one. So that was, but it worked out. So if you watch the picture, that's all day for night, that stuff when you run around to the woods. Gillard's second Halloween entry is a two-parter and stars the famous Maori sisters. Twitches and Twitches 2 was based on a series of 10 novels by H.B. Gilmore and Randy Reisfeld, and is essentially a Halloween spin on the premise of Sister Sister with Harry Potter overtones. However, with the power of the Maori twins in 2005, it became Disney's highest rated DCOM upon its release. Twitches was sent to me and uh... 
again, a really, really funny script. But what sealed it were the uh, Maori sisters who were very popular at the time. I just ran into Tamara, coincidentally, like two weeks ago, three weeks, what, a month ago at the airport up here. She was up doing a movie up here. And T and Tamara, and they were just incredibly talented. They're, they're kids that are uh, army brats. I think, they're, I think they told me that their mother was in the, joined the army and their father joined the army because he was in love with their mother to be with her. So they grew up on army bases all over the world. And so when I would talk to them, they'd go, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they would say it simultaneously, but just slightly in different registers. It was like perfect harmony, their voices. And that's how they, they almost saluted. And they were just amazingly talented girls. They were so generous and so funny. And they had a really big fan base at that time. We used to have a lot of fans would come on the set. For the first time on Disney DVD, when they were born, they had no idea what their futures would hold. The twins aren't safe together. The darkness won't rest until it finds them. But on their 21st birthday, two girls will discover... I knew something was gonna happen today. Why do you look like me? I don't know, but isn't it cool? They're not just sisters. They're twitches. Twin witches! When the original casting was done, uh, Tia played one part and Tamara played the other. And then they, that's the way the, the writer had written it. And then um, they called us and said, you know, we think we should switch. We met them. And uh, I, I think I met them at, over at, uh, in Burbank at the Disney office. And they said, we, we said, we know ourselves and we should, we should put the roles. And they did a few lines. You could see instantly they were right. Oddly enough, they would have been miscast. We would have cast them the wrong way. If they hadn't, yeah, it would have, would have, you know, been a different movie, and it wouldn't have been as good, because they were, they were very much the characters. That, I mean, they that they played to their strengths the way they uh, ended up being written, the roles they played. That movie was a perfect television series. If you think about it, the, I think the demand for for witches' stories, and here you had twins with a big fan base, and I really thought they missed the boat by not making that a series because it had a huge following, and it's kind of natural too. As I said, I really tried to push Twitches to be a television series. And that, I don't know why they didn't do it, actually. I think in a way they sort of did Wizards of Waverly Place. I suppose in a way they kind of did that. But it took a while. I don't know. I guess they had a sequel rights to the, to the actors. I'm not positive. But it was put into development fairly shortly after that. And, uh, again, I think Twitches 2 was not quite as good as Twitches. We kind of struggled. We kind of ended up making kind of the same movie in a weird way. But it was good. It was still fun. I think the original Twitches was probably a little more original. We shot in Toronto, which has got a castle, of course, and it's got a University of Toronto. has got this great Gothic building in it that we shot all of Twitches and Twitches too in. It's got this very, you know, uh, Gothic arches, and it's, it's uh, really a natural, kind of almost a fantasy-like design to it, and it's kind of scaled down. So it's a beautiful building on campus, one of the campuses of the University of Toronto. And so that's where we shot all of that stuff. And then they have a ca an actual castle that a Scottish guy built uh, in the early, late 1800s. He spent, I don't know, you know, equivalent of millions of dollars today and built it for his life. And then, of course, like all these things are, it's got a tragic ending because his wife died, I think, before he could get it finished. But it's called Castle Loma. It sits on a big hill in Toronto. So that, a lot of the stuff was shot there. So, you know, that helped. We had these big sets, uh, these big locations that we could shoot some scope to. And... Uh, very funny. The actors that play, um, you know, the two kind of guardians, they're really good. They ended up doing two or three movies for me. They're, um, I love, they're from Second City. I say I always cast Second City whenever I can for all the parts because Second City is always character-based comedy and they're always just brilliant. And then they did, when they got there, they could add Liv. And, you know, they're just, they added so much to that, those parts. You, I could just give them, I would just suggest something and they would just add to live something that's hysterically right on the spot. I, I loved that. I loved going to the set every day, actually, on, on that picture in Soul Patrol because every day was, you had a good time. You know, you made good work, you shot good film and, you know, did the good scenes, but people are always in a good mood. It's rare. Twitch is two. Coming in October to Disney Channel. So I was very resistant to doing it for a while when they, when my agent would call. Uh, and you know, I, I just wasn't, I, I just, I don't, I felt the same thing as that. I don't know if I want to do that. You know, I just had this bad impression of what these movies would be. And that, that's when, when Soul Patrol came across and I read that script, I thought, this is just really a good script. It's like a top, this could be a feature film. That's kind of the quality that they kept up.
Thanks for listening to Halloween Treats, presented by the Look Back Machine. Stay tuned for the entire month of October for an episode every single day till November.